Hello, DJs. Today we're going over on a ten thousand dollar investigation. So this client paid ten thousand dollars to try and recover one point five million, and he's working with the Lebanese authorities to help recovering the funds. I'll try to show you what the state of asset recovery is at and how incompetent. Lebanese authority, well, not not Lebanese in specific, I'm very sorry, but the general retail public and institutions, how delayed they are. They are they don't even know what's going on here. Okay, I'll explain you why this report might be very good, but with with how society is uh, slowed or delayed on on how to handle all of this information this report is like talking chinese to spanish person okay i've i've already spoken with many lawyers made many litigation lawyers and if i handle this kind of reports uh, there is one report which is 42 pages long i don't or 52 pages long i guess it's this one Hussein Fares lawsuit, they have problems. One, two, three. We got three. Okay, here. Oh, interesting, it doesn't download. Okay. So this is how the investigation looks like, okay? It's an investment scam, typical scam where uh, there is a fake exchange. You get lured into depositing $1,000. This $1,000 eventually grow into 1 million or whatever. And then you keep depositing more and more and more and more and and you, you end up losing a lot of money, okay? They, t they trick you with mm, making you believe that your investment grew by 10,000% and, and so you keep depositing into that exchange, okay? So, um, as we can see, the report is constructed very clearly. What are the objectives? It will probably explain that we are trying to get subpoenable entities. The on-chain analysis on all the deposits, honestly, no one will read this, but it's good to have, it's, it's necessary to have, because otherwise you can just be making everything up. And victim deposit to suspect and suspect deposits to the victim, okay. Then three most important, deposits to exchanges, you can see, four different exchanges. This is probably the most important part of the investigation. These are the four entities that can help us with collab with retrieving the funds. How? By freezing them and returning them if they get a subpoena point for, from law enforcement. So uh, let's go to page 4.1. Uh, okay. To activate the Tron wallet, it's necessary to perform a transaction by sending at least one TRX. Highlight. Mm -hmm. same activator path. Okay. Suspect wallet five is is responsible for activating suspect wallet four and twelve. And okay. So here we are. Uh, explaining a bit who funded these wallets and and he, he's saying that there are some links between all of the suspect wallets in in this report and see this is for example suspect wallet 8 and if, if you just keep following the trace of the funds uh, you can do this with Arkham you don't need any expensive uh, 
any expensive software you can just do it with Arcam because many of this information is uh, redundant uh, here we have also some lab labeling uh, activator funding would mean um, w which wallet funded the wallet so the, what we just explained before suspect wallets can be when there has been some sort of uh, money laundering or they have used uh, cross blockchain and you have to figure out by timing which are the possible suspect wallets relay wallets i don't really understand honestly so let's let's try to i don't understand i don't i am not a native english speaker so i'll try to f find out later dormant funds is when you just uh, deposit money into a wallet and you forget about it you just have the private keys and and that's uh something that scammers do and eventually at some later stage they with they try to withdraw or they try to sell it uh peer-to-peer -peer for cash or for jewels or for rolex and then this final the withdrawals are the at the very beginning to outline how he got scammed okay uh, dormant funds when when we get the dormant funds here what we can do is setting up some signal uh some automation that tells you whenever there is any movement into any of these wallets you can do this with many bots there's even with arcom but you can do it with discord and there's many bots that can help you giving out signals for any future movements so you you don't keep track of it it's very important to be very fast response with this because uh, when there is a deposit into an exchange you have 24 hours to act so you have 24 hours from the signal alert to basically call the the exchange the kyc team or customer support and hand out the report so they can not you actually you have to first give it to the authorities and they have to do that for you so there's there's a lot of bureaucracy that slows down the process and just because of that you can miss all your funds okay so uh, what do we have here i wanted to what are relay wallet let's ask chat gpt What are relay wallets uh, in crypto investigations? Okay. Okay, so it's for example, uh, one time wallets. Let's see, if I'll, I'll show you another example here. Uh, for example, fixed float. Fixed float, when you make a deposit into, into fixed float, which is an exchange, they will generate a wallet for you. Let's try to, let's try to do this. So you understand better. And to this one, this is just another scam victim. See, so we, we have, uh, this would be relay wallets because before uh, sending it to the central wallet, which is this one, this would be the relay wallet. Mm, maybe it has some custom program and that's why they need to do it, okay? Mm, a, a relay wallet could also be just, if, I, if a normal wallet that is in between, just so to avoid any direct connection, and yeah it, it this process of relay wallet can be i've seen automated programs that can generate a hundred relay wallets and and you as a crypto investigator you're just clicking wallet after wallet after wallet after wallet 
and when you reach the end the last wallet you will see that the program keeps going so you can if if a lot of time passes you can keep clicking forever <laughs> and and you get quite bored and annoyed okay let's keep going with the investigation mm. so uh, where did i leave the for here okay so here we go over the dormant funds in every single wallet it's okay okay here this is interesting all right what can law enforcement do here the ip is very interesting because it helps you uh, when you file a demand you need to file it in the jurisdiction of the of the scammer because then it helps it's not an international settlement anymore and and it helps with the speed of the process KYC okay, well, information this is optimal but sometimes uh, you, you, you just get someone from a homeless person to give his ID for the registration and that's what mafias do in in Spanish it's called testaferro I don't know how it's called in in English deposit and withdrawal history interesting yeah because sometimes uh, they they used exchanges just as a as an extra step they deposit and then they withdraw so you're wasting your time in until the the exchange in question gives you all the information and by that time maybe he already has the the funds elsewhere so I'll deposit addresses any data okay okay here it fa it's facilitating the information to law enforcement who to email this is good yes and here this is just the no one will read this but it's necessary to justify everything uh, this is probably the worst part what i prefer to do when we do quick and cheap investigations is I only include this in a separate Excel spreadsheet and and I I send it if they ask me to and because I can take you know, you someone can take year well not years but at least four or five hours if it's a long investigation just on doing this and the most important part is to be quick so yeah you don't to to find out what really happened you don't really need to put this so uh, let's get on what happened after this uh, these are just some graphs that demonstrate everything in a visual way maybe too visual i don't know it's it's good to categorize everything i it is a good practice and and I'm surprised on how he gets such a high quality when you zoom in. Uh, I, I need to find out how, how he did this. Maybe there's some tool to create these, these graphs. I know you can do this with Maltego, for example. Mm, okay. So here we got the lawsuit in, in Beirut, in Lebanon. So the plaintiff is directly... Uh, Okay, so he got connected to attorneys here that uh, output all the information here. First contact, tac, tac, tac. I, I probably don't want to show this too much, but this is basically uh, how the lawyer is sending all of this information over. If you are not a lawyer, it's not interesting for you. I'm trying to teach you how to be the one doing the investigation, not not the lawyer, but uh, your paper will usually be just handing this information to law enforcement and connecting your scam victim to a lawyer team that you trust, okay? So, as you can see, even if you put a lot of effort into an investigation, in my opinion, it's better to charge 
1,000 or 2,000 euros, try to be as quick as possible and not be so detailed because I consider it a scam. You don't need to, you don't need to make such a detailed report. You need to be fast and you need to be helpful. You don't need to hand out something that uh, it's too intricate to understand. You need to be quick, cheap and fast. And then if you want to make money, then charge on the, on the, when you, when you get uh, the money back, then you just get like uh, 10, 20, 30% commission and, and that's it. And that's, that's my modus operandi. Anyone can have their own modus operandi. So another thing he said here. Yeah, he's just clueless and, and this is a problem. In any case, you have to contact Tether if the, if the money is in USDT, then that's probably the only way you can, you can at least freeze the funds. The other way is to mm, freeze them through an exchange. The most important part is to make law enforcement understand otherwise you're just making it slower so this is all for today i wanted to show you this investigation and uh, next up on the next video we're gonna do an investigation step by step on a half a million dollar case so you understand how i do the approach on the investigations and and, and why i think it's a better approach okay thank you guys it's been it's been a few hours. I was just editing the video, and I I received this update from Tether. So this is what they replied: We have assessed the reference addresses and the information provided. Da 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 da. We observed that the target addresses engaged in hundreds of thousands of transactions after receiving the trace funds, making it impossible to attribute a significant portion of their current balance to the stolen funds. Please be advised that to proceed with the freeze, we must clearly attribute the current balances of the target addresses to the victim's stolen funds, with the vast majority of the balances linked to the typology of the case. However, due to the reasons outlined above, achieving this level of certainty is not possible in this case. Given these considerations, there is a substantial risk of freezing unrelated funds. Consequently, we cannot freeze these addresses as the legal and reputational risks fall outside our risk tolerance. What does this mean? At the point that we are assuming addresses and there is some money laundering and obfuscation of funds, uh, it must be very clearly connected and linked. You cannot just make 24 suspect wallets and yeah it, it's not always it's not always the case and and tron and tether aren't aren't the aren't really known for their compliance and centralized efforts i guess only oops only on very specific cases cases where the trace is straight and and maybe there are dormant funds on addresses uh, that don't share anything else they just have usdt and it's dormant usdt then that would be possible but we have to really link that together and yeah that's the update at least i hope that you you will not get this information out of this channel. I, you, you will not find this information anywhere. And if you are going to try to pay anyone else, they're going to try to scam you. Many scammers are trying to recover victim funds. So be aware, be careful, please. Don't fall for these traps. I, I, I don't mind if you book an appointment. I, I will explain you everything for free. I, I don't want more people to fall scams okay thank you very much guys see you on the next one and we'll see a report on the next video okay thank you